vigilante groups, members hack into companies and governments. You've seen them wearing masks in protest. They prefer a life in the shadows. But this morning, a former top member breaks his silence. He helped carry out cyber attacks that caused up to $50 million in damages. Only on CBS this morning, Hector Monsignor opens up about his arrest and switching sides. Tinkering with the system and learning how it functioned, I was able to escape escape from the current situation we were going through. So you were self-taught? Absolutely. You know, everybody around me were into something, but it wasn't computers. From the moment Hector Monsega got his hands on a used desktop, he had a passion for computers. But for the boy raised by his grandmother in this New York City housing project, it was the internet that provided a gateway to something bigger. How did you learn about hacking? You know, we were poor, so I needed to find a way that would be cheap or free so that I could be able to access the internet without being a burden to my grandmother. According to court documents, at first he stole credit card information, selling the numbers or using them to pay his own bills. Monsiga eventually adopted the name Sabu and joined a mysterious group of hackers about to take off. Tell me about Anonymous. Anonymous is an idea. An idea where we could all be anonymous. We could all work together as a crowd, united. We could rise and fight against oppression. We are Anonymous. We are Legion. As Anonymous grew, Monsiga helped take the movement to a worldwide level. <laughs> At the height of the Arab Spring in Tunisia, he hijacked the Prime Minister's website, posting this letter in support of protesters. It was amazing. I saw finally I was able to do something that contributed to society, regardless if I was at home in the Lower East Side, in the projects, behind a computer. Monsignor admits he was behind thousands of hacks. While working with Anonymous and his own offshoot group, LOSEC, some of his targets included Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, Sony, and the U.S. Senate. Hacking's illegal. Yep. Were you worried about getting caught? Not necessarily. Because you thought you were better than they were? After you're hacking for so long, you reach a point of no return. Regardless if you fear that they're going to get you one day, it's too late. In June 2011, Monsiga led a brazen attack on the website of InfraGuard, an FBI affiliate. Days later, a team of FBI agents showed up at the same apartment where he grew up. So they said, well, we know who you are. We know what you're doing. And we also know you have two kids in the house. You make the decision. So it's clear as day they had an understanding that my weakness was your kids. Uh, was the kids. He immediately chose to work as an FBI informant to avoid the possibility of serving up to 26 years in prison. For the next three years, he continued communicating with fellow hackers. Only now, every keystroke was logged. The FBI says that you helped them mm -hmm. prevent more than 300 cyber attacks. Yeah. The military. NASA. I was able to intercept attacks that were happening against the government and um, share it with the government so they could fix these issues. He also played a key role in the arrest of a group of co-conspirators, seven of whom pleaded guilty, including the FBI's most wanted cyber criminal, Jeremy Hammond. Some fellow hacktivists saw Monsiga's cooperation as the ultimate betrayal, labeling him a rat. Did you take any pride in giving these guys up? It wasn't a situation where I identified anybody. I didn't point my fingers at nobody. You're I did not provide... You rationalizing this. No, it's, 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 I'm giving you reality. My cooperation entailed logging and providing intelligence. It didn't mean... Can you please tell me uh, the identity of one of your mates? Suppose they said that. How? We're anonymous. Montego's talent and keen eye highlighted vulnerabilities in the critical system that keep America online. Well, Threats, he says, still exist. And in all reality, there is no security. The hackers will break right into the airport. The phone systems, obviously. The water supply systems shut them down. Scary to me. It should be an inspiration to the American government to, to focus on our infrastructure. We have a sickening reliance on security contractors, the companies that Edward Snowden worked for. Right. Who will guard the guards, Charlie? Our security, the people we pay for, people that we hire with tax dollars, 
are not really secure themselves. Earlier this year, Monsiga was sentenced to time served. On the day his cooperation was made public, Anonymous suggested it was indestructible, tweeting, Anonymous is a hydra, cut off one head and we grow two back. Monsiga's family was threatened and he remains cautious. Would you do any of this differently? If I were to go back, I would remain a political activist. Activist, hacker. However, I would stay away from Anonymous. Because? It was just too much publicity. Can you imagine that if you had not gone one direction, mm -hmm. but had ended up in Silicon Valley? Well, that's the problem. I didn't end up in Silicon Valley. I had no connections to the world. And I guarantee you, though, had I made it to Silicon Valley, had I met you when I was 18, and you probably could have pointed me in the right direction, right. you and I would be having a completely different discussion. Clearly bright, smart mm -hmm. guy, Charlie. Stop talking. Yeah, and talking to you very candidly. I love the question he asked you, who will guard the guards, Charlie? Mm -hmm. I'm surprised he's talking so candidly. Yeah, I'm way. surprised. I mean, I guess he was outed in those legal documents and those still. trial, but still. Yeah. All right. President Obama had the chance to tell Stephen Colbert a big